Ron Brown, I'm going to be talking about misinformation in the media, what exactly misinformation is, why it is bad for our society as a whole, and ways that we can ultimately prevent it. So, I'm going to start with a quote by Lewinsky Agner. Misinformation can be defined as any, er, any information that turns out to be false. So this can be information that you come across in your day-to-day -day, in your day-to-day -day life on social media, information that you watch on the news, or any media that you are taking in throughout the day. And this also brings me to, the next, to my next quote. Uh, on social media, like plat or on social media platforms, retweeting is one of the easiest ways to share misinformation. So this comes to all of us because I know we're all very active on social media. I mean, we're part of the new generation. It's just kind of our day-to-day -day life. And when we're sharing information, it's important to not share information that is false because this could be spreading misinformation that could affect others and could arrive or could bring issues to light that we don't want to bring to light. And this also brings me to the next point by Bassett Art Artwell. Attention payoff affects the intent to share misinformation. So attention payoff, this is anything that you get from a post that you are sharing, you know, say you share a post and you're like, oh, someone's liking it. Well, well that makes me feel good, you know, like people are engaging with my post. So, but this also causes problems when people are sharing misinformation because they're sharing information that might not entirely be true, but people are interacting with it and people are liking it. So they're like, oh, okay, people are liking the information I'm sharing. But when you're sharing bad information, you're causing more issues, even though it may be benefiting you, you're causing bigger issues than just yourself. So this brings me to my next topic of why misinformation is bad. And according to an article written by Matthew Conroe, he found an overall false falsehood rate of 9% with a potential readership of 256 million, uh, with most of it being negative. So with this big engagement of people across the world and this information being negative, this brings big issues to, this arises big issues because with the information being negative, this could affect someone's likeliness. Say you're talking about someone in the media, say you're talking about a politician and you're sharing misinformation on them. This could affect their whole campaign, and this could affect all the issues that they're trying to cover. Like, say in the, the upcoming election, we're all going to be voting this upcoming year because, I mean, we're all 18. If not, by the next calendar year, we will be. Um, but um, if you're spreading this information on a politician, or for example, and this information is not true, and someone reads that information, they could say, oh, okay, so this guy. This guy's I was taught saying this, so why would I ever vote for him? Well, that's not really what his campaign's about, and this could affect your overall information that you're taking in. And um, this is this brings me to my next point. Um, an article written by Jer, uh, Jer, uh, Jared Ritter. If you make a bad de uh, if you make a bad decision based on misinformation, you will run into a problem sooner than later. And this is a drastic issue, or this is a drastic example of misinformation, but also an example of misinformation, the January 6th incident of the storming of the Capitol. This, is mis or this was caused by misinformation due to Trump. I don't care what your political beliefs are, but Trump shared some information that wasn't entirely true, that wasn't entirely fact-based, and this caused a lot of people to storm the Capitol, which was a huge issue. And this is, I know uh, this is a drastic example, but this does show what misinformation can cause and the issues that it can arise. And this is truly terrifying if you really look into it, and it's a problem that really needs to be addressed. And um, some way, or this brings me to the next point on some ways that we can go about preventing misinformation and identifying it. So, sorry, I got a little lost in my note color too. So, how to identify uh, misinformation. One of the best ways that you can identify misinformation is to spot unreliable sources. So even though you may be, say, I know most people are divided with Fox and CNN, but these are two biased based news sources and they could be taking quotes that someone said, like Amy was saying earlier, and they could be like taking it out of context of what they're saying. So they could say, they could say something that they were saying to someone else regarding a different issue, but then cover a completely separate issue with what they were saying earlier. And this uh, arises problems, so you need to really look into the websites that you're using and the media that you are intaking every day on your day-to-day -day life and realize what's their agenda they're trying to cover, what issues and what problems 
is their company trying to cover and if they have an agenda or not. And um, according to Drew Beasley in 2022, uh, it's important to curate high quality fact-based information. So there's many ways that you can go about fact-checking fact information. There's many sites that you can go to. And it's important to use these sites and, and, uh, and honestly to see if the information that you're taking on your day-to-day -day life is true and whether it is fact-based or just opinionated. And yes, it's very important. And um, shoot. sorry if I have to cover some of my slides. That's a very important part. This is what is misinformation. Why is it bad? And where is it coming from? And how do I identify and stop it? So one of the, another way that we can go about stopping misinformation is to report posts. So if you're on social media like Twitter, this is for example, it's, they made it very easy to report posts because it is such a big issue. So it is important to put a stop to it. So some ways that you can go about reporting posts is if you hold down a post, you will get these three options and you can press report tweet. And when you are reporting a tweet, it will come across of any of these issues. And it's a suspicious or scam. That's kind of related to misinformation. I know this is kind of an old, art or old image, but now there is a uh, thing that says reporting for misinformation or disinformation. So it is an option. And um, once it has been flagged enough times, Twitter actually will um, take or put this on top of the post that it is misinformation or it has been deemed to be false. And um, it will warn people before they intake that information. So now that I've covered what, what misinformation is, why it is bad, and the ways that you can go about preventing it, will you personally t take an effort to prevent misinformation? Thank you.